Hello, it's time for another gateway to Geats, baby, because we have a new episode of Geats to talk about, everybody, and this time, I'm, I'm back on the left side, because it's more comfy, but hey, speaking of left, last time we left our heroes, uh, Geats was on the run, and the Game Master was gunning for him, and he wants him dead, and basically says, like, hey, Hey on Kwop, go hunt him down. That's the new game. And ultimately, they are not pleased about this. They are like, what the fuck is going on? None of this, none of this tracks, none of this is going good. Um Neon catches up with Geats, but meanwhile, Kwa is talking to the game master, and the game master is basically going like, hey, dude, you gotta understand where I'm coming from. Geats has been just giving me a bunch of headaches, it's kind of bullshit that he keeps winning, it's so on and so forth. I mean, look at this wish that he just made, look at this desire that we'd have to grant him, it's kind of dumb. This, this, this isn't, this is how it should be doing, right? So, hey, follow me, just go along, and hey, you can, uh, you can get your wish, you can save all the people, right? You can save all the people, you can do all that kind of stuff. There is a slight, like, flaw in his logic, though, of if Kawa does win, his wish ultimately would bring Ace back because Ace would have died in the games, so Ace would still be back and then be able to play in the next round. So, like, Game Master, you're a little dumb. You're a little dumb. Tiny, tiny bit dumb. But he is smart in the fact that he does give Kawa a another copy of the Jet Cannon Power Up. So that's all good. Meanwhile, Neon, keeping an eye on uh, Geats though, uh, Punk Jack shows up and starts attacking Geats. And they have a little fight back and forth, and uh, Neon's nearby. And for, they fight for a little bit, and an explosion appears, and we don't see the aftermath, but Neon does. Okay. But we do know that Punk Jack is eliminated, and the Game Master just badmouths Punk Jack. And it's just like, dude, the guy just died. Do what you told him. Like, you brain control. They are, they are, they are really speedrunning asshole territory for this guy. It's great. Um, and basically, Samuri is just, like, politely livid. Like, she is, I have to do my job, and I have to be polite here. But you were a dickhead. Fuck you. And, and goes basically saying, like, this is all wrong, you were abusing your power, all that kind of stuff. Right? Kawa and Neon are in the lobby, and they're just going like, this is, this is bullshit. We don't want to fucking fight Ace. He's our friend. This is bullshit. And they go like, alright, cool, we gotta figure out a plan. We, we gotta do a, we gotta do a plan, and all that kind of stuff. And Samori goes out to help clean Ace's injuries from the explosion. Ace survived. Huzzah. And it's a cute little moment of Ace also going like, Aw, oh, this is real nice. Thank you, sister. All that kind of stuff. And she's like, fuck you. It's cute. And they, 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 they do talk about Ace's mom for a moment. And Samori can't divulge anything that happened to his mom. But it made me think of like, oh, wait a second. We also have like them becoming a family thing from the desire this would be a fun like ironic twist of fate of what if Samuri is the daughter of Ace's mom thus making them really brother and sister like that would be just like a, a cute little twist you know it's like oh yeah by the way you two are actually brother and sister Nani the fuck all that kind of stuff but speaking of brother and sisters, Kawa is talking to his sister, and through this conversation, he basically finds his resolve to go through with fighting Ace, essentially, of uh, because his sister just goes like, "Yo, you know, I'm happy living my life the way it is, but I know our parents would want more for us. They would want us to strive for more." And he goes like, "Yeah, yeah, strive for more, desire, all that kind of stuff. You know, getting ready to fight, getting ready to be fucking." common rider go fight and shit uh meanwhile uh neon is talking to her dad and we don't see the full spread of the conversation uh, in fact i don't think we see the full spread of the conversation in its totality but uh we do see that uh 
she goes like, hey, dad, I, I know you're part of the DGP. Fucking let's cards on the table. And he's like, all right, all right, cards on the table. And I love how he looks kind of skeevy, but not super skeevy. Like, it's a good mix of skeeviness, you know, you know. But through all that resolving and figuring everything out, okay, well, basically goes like, hey, I'm, I'm going to go fight Geats. He goes heads down to fight Geats. They even use the same power up. It's a fun fight of them just going back and forth. And Geats is on top of it. You know, he is definitely the one that's more experienced, one that has more fight experience, all that kind of stuff. But Tycoon is giving it all, giving his all. He's really trying at it. But Geats does have the upper hand. And because Geats has the upper hand... The game master goes like, "Fuck, he can't, he can't finish it." So he hinges and he starts to fight too, and they have a little bit of a fight, only briefly because the plaid producer that we've seen show up some walks in and goes like, "Hey, buddy, that's no good." And Neon walks back up and reveals that they had hatched a plan that Neon was going to go talk to her dad and get the producers involved because the game master was abusing his position of power and they needed to show that and basically like put it on film for the people in charge to see to like actually do something and Kawa's part of the plan was to basically fight Geats just enough that the game master would go like all right cool he needs my help and then thus Henshin fight and show his corruption and like it's a good great little like twist it's a like great little turnabout and there's a brief back and forth and basically the game master just tries to justify all of his actions like hey ace needs to go these all this kind of stuff the jumatos are growing stronger and um ace is uh wishing for superfluous bullshit wishes and kaywell goes like fuck you Fuck you, all the wishes are valid because they're fighting with our lives. Fuck you, desires are valuable. It doesn't matter what Ace is wishing for. He has a reason for wanting to wish for that. And it's just like, oh, cool. They they see you eye to eye, Kewa and Ace do, and they're like friends, they're bros. And the Game Master just fucking goes like, okay, this is all bullshit. He starts fighting them. Neon transforms into Nago and... All three of them are just fighting. They're they're holding their own. God damn, the game master uh, glare. I think is the the superhero form. The super form. It just kicking their ass, and like it, they are on the back foot when the plaid producer basically walks in front of uh, the game master and goes like, "All right, you're done. I'm you're you're eliminated. I'm killing you. I have the power to do that. Apparently, holy shit." What is this dude's deal? What the fuck? But overall, the Game Master is eliminated and the situation saved. And the, the our three uh, heroes kind of detention. They talk a little bit and Ace basically goes like, yo, you, you guys tricked me. You, got, you guys did it. And there was a cute little moment of like, Ty, uh, of Kawa basically going like, yeah, you only know, Ty, uh, Tanukis are a little tricksters too. And then Neon basically says, like, oh, yeah, and cats, too. And then you realize, oh, wait a second. All three of those creatures have trickster connotations in Japanese Shinto beliefs. And it's just like, oh, God, why didn't I see that before? Like, I noticed some of the yokai elements before. But, like, the specific tri trickster archetypes here, like, that's fun. That's interesting, especially considering the fact that, like, Ultimately, these guys haven't been heavy power ever hitters, you know what I mean? Like, they're strong, they're they're capable fighters, but they so far it seems like they win through being intelligent and solving the way out of the problem, you know? And maybe that might be like a sub theme somewhere, I don't know. You know, that kind of thing. Uh but ultimately they go like, hey. This is a fun little cute moment between all of them, camaraderie and everything. And then they go like, okay, so what's going to happen now? Because no one technically won that game. And Samuri basically comes in and goes like, hey, 
all three of you get immediate access into the next round. You get it. You, you get an immediate second shot. I was like, all right, cool. That's fine. The last game is thrown out, all that kind of stuff. Meanwhile, we see the gardener and he's going like, oh, sweet, brand new fertilizer. And you go, wait a second. Is he talking about the contestants? Holy shit. Maybe the desire as fertilizer for the Giamatos has some bearing on it, you know? Um, but he goes like, oh, wait a second. This guy's, this guy's not quite dead. And he goes like, oh, it must be because he used the zombie power so much that he's kind of in a state of undeath. As we see Buffa lying th there with the cracked core. Holy crap. So is he just kind of going to be like a weird loose canon agent in the story now? Or is he going to be a Giamato? Like, is the gardener going to use and capitalize on that stuff? But despite all of that, despite all of that, we then see the platform where we go and it's revealed to our heroes that not only, not only are they into the new round, but the DGP isn't quite what it seems because they've already uncovered a lot of info. It's like, hey, fuck it, why not? Here you go. Um, the DGP is a reality TV show and... Boy, howdy, is it reminding me a lot of Mojo from Marvel Comics. Um, but overall, that's kind of where this episode ends, and this is where the arc ends, and it's a damn good end to the arc. It's a damn, this is a really good episode. It had a lot of great fights, a lot of fun reveals, and our trio is like really becoming a unit. Like they are friends. They are a group. They rely on each other. They trust each other. Like even when they can't audibly say like, here's the plan. They trust each other enough that they can execute a plan, you know? And like they, there's a, there's a trust between the three of them. And I really like that. We also get possible reveals on the Giamatos that may dive more into what they do. Also, we got the uh, the big reveal of the reality game show. Whoa! There, that completely changes an overarching theme of the show, which has been fighting for your desire. Now there's a, a secondary theme of how people will manipulate your desires in order for other people's entertainment. Basically, basically it's like putting someone into a game show saying, oh, you're gonna get a million dollars when they're desperate for money they will act desperately, you know what I mean? And, like, that manipulation of desire and weaponizing it and abusing it, like, that, that's fascinating because it's also been part of, like, oh, you're fighting for, you're putting your lives on the line for the possibility of your desire, and this is just adding another, like, layer to it, you know? It's, it's good, it's good theming, it's good uh, layering of concepts onto it, you know? But, yeah. It's reality competitions. It reminds reminds me of uh, Mojo uh, from Marvel Comics. If you don't know Mojo, he's basically a dude in an alternate dimension who just runs reality TV. Uh, really big, bad Marvel villain. He's fun. Uh, big, he's gross. I love him. Um, but there's also, like, another aspect because, because of, like, the whole, oh, weaponizing your desire, your wants for entertainment of others that it, my brain may just be in that headspace because of um, Starlight Review, an anime a friend of mine just made me watch. It's really good. I really enjoyed it. And I'm probably going to be making a video essay about it sometime soon. But yeah, that's where my head is at with this kind of stuff. Because, A, of course, I'm just going to think about power and abuse and how people use that kind of stuff. But overall, super fun episode. Great end to the arc. Kamen Rider Geats is doing a lot of good, in my opinion. But you know what also does a lot of good? You leaving comments in YouTube. Uh, Fish Pop, again, with some fun comments. Why does someone always die in a Christmas adjacent episode? I had thought it odd there was a cracked buffa core in the recently revealed core set. First things first, why does someone die at Christmas? Because eh, it's probably just because end of the year, the last few episodes, let's give them a fun little cliffhanger, all that kind of stuff. Also, I imagine Japan just doesn't have the connotations of Christmas that we do, so why not just fucking do whatever? 
Um, and oh boy, after this episode, that cracked Buffa core has a lot more behind it other than just we need as many toys out there as possible, you know? But good comment, good comment. Uh, esc wait, hold on. Esconde. 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 That's how I'll say it. Esconde. Uh, I am looking forward to the Grand Prix will conclude. KWA winning seems like the best shot of getting Buffa back, but if KWA doesn't win, I wonder how likely it would be for Buffa's ID core would be used for a Jumato Rider in the next DGP. That'd be a twisted way of granting him the power to crush all common riders. Well, it did not end with a winner. It, I do think KWA winning and getting the, oh, everybody comes back is definitely going to happen sometime in the future in order to like reset some things rejigger some stuff um but i do think this round ended well and that doesn't mean we can't have buffa as a jimato now because of where he ended up how he's still alive and it could still all be a possibility but but boy boy howdy this this was a good episode. I hope you enjoyed your time here at Gateway to Gates. But this is all we have time for. But hey, like, comment, subscribe, do all this stuff, ring all the bells. It helps out, you know, and share this with other Common Rider fans if you think they like it. Or not. I mean, fuck me, right? A until next time, stay Gateway to Geatsing. Yep, that's the catchphrase now. That's the catchphrase now. Bye!